New York City and I had recently finished writing a series of essays about urban wildlife. So during lockdown, when the pandemic was pretty grim, I found myself following reports of animals behaving in unusual ways in other cities. An octopus swam into a canal in Venice. There had never been an octopus there before. Coyotes that usually avoid humans during the day began trotting into city centers. One enjoyed a romp near the Golden Gate Bridge. I began to see these incidents as a series of vignettes in a children's book. Then I saw a video of a kangaroo hopping through a city in Australia with the kind of joy you see in young children when they play outdoors. That kangaroo opens my book. I think kids can relate to that joy and also the strangeness, a kangaroo with a city all to itself. I interviewed scientists and I spoke with teachers and it seemed that writing about what happened to wildlife when human activity slowed down is a perfect entree to speak about this terrible time with children. There was some good news to report. Imagining wildlife unbounded and unobstructed by human activity and industry gives kids hope. It gives me hope too. Look how nature bounces back when people get out of the way. Habitat is one of the key concepts we use when we think about the natural world and one that kids can immediately understand. During the pandemic, animal habitats expanded, at least temporarily. So that information is crucial to the book. Children begin learning about interdependent relationships and ecosystems in kindergarten, according to next generation science standards. And that of course includes habitats. I think librarians, teachers, booksellers, and caregivers alike would agree that it's important to understand we're part of an ecosystem, that we interact with our environment, and we're interdependent upon nature and each other. I'm a volunteer expedition leader with the Wildlife Conservation Society, and the elementary students that I lead on zoo tours love talking about habitats. They like to describe what they see, the nest or the den or a pond or a tree. They like to know about the homes of animals because they understand what home means to them. They love answering the question, what is your habitat? I think the book can be used as a way to think about their surroundings. Do you live near a mountain forest like gorillas, an ocean like sea turtles, or a city like the coyotes? I include a variety of habitats and animals in the book, from spring peepers and their ponds to flamingos and wetlands and lions and their savanna. And I include descriptions about each in the back matter as well. I hope the book soothes children and offers them a bright spot when thinking about the pandemic. I hope it encourages empathy for wildlife. I hope it prompts questions about why certain animals behave the way they did. I hope it inspires some kids to become active in their local community as citizen scientists. I include some suggestions and resources for doing this in my epilogue. Most of all, I really hope they like these stories about animals on the move during a very unusual year.